You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. Hey, this is Owen. If you're comfortable, leave your first name and state at the sound of the tiny truck backing up. Hi, Owen. First off, huge fan. And uh, I've been following your uh, videos since I was actually a kid growing up in the JW uh, organization. And I just wanted to, first off, thank you so much for everything you've done to be able to allow me to be shit for what it is and turn my life into a better, truer version of itself instead of just suffering and depressed and suicidal for so long. So first off, thank you for that. And second, my question was, uh, when I grew up uh, as a Jehovah's Witness, when I was 16, I had someone find out about my sexuality. And from there forward, I was forced to go to weekend, uh, like, entire days, like two days at a time with an elder. And they would go through all this uh, scriptures and publications with me about how my sexuality was wrong and I needed to change it. And it was done until I turned 18. I was wondering if you know of anyone else that dealt with that or if that was just a particular situation because a lot of my family is trying to deny it, but they're all in. So I'm the only FOMO. Thank you. Bye. That's awesome that uh, my videos have helped you to some extent. I appreciate the phone call. That's absolutely fantastic. For those of you listening um, who may not have been Jehovah's Witness, at the end he mentioned that he was Pomo. I guess you guys probably don't know what that is. Most of you probably know, but just in case you don't, I'll elaborate a little bit. Ex-Jehovah's Witnesses have this, uh, I guess, acronym system. It's Pomo, P-O-M-O, means physically out and mentally out. Pimo, or P-I-M-O, means physically in, mentally out. Um, Pomi, I guess, would be the other, means physically out but mentally in. Like, you've been disfellowshipped, or you want to be a member, but you can't be. You're on the outside. You still believe it, but you're out of it for one reason or another. This person is physically out and mentally out, luckily. To answer the question more directly, I think the question really boiled down to, have I heard any other stories about Jehovah's Witnesses mistreating members of the LGBT community? And to, the, the answer to that is yes, I have. That's a really unique description, though. I, I don't think I've talked to anybody at length about how they were treated within the religion, but it doesn't surprise me at all to learn that they basically tutored you and followed you around and studied with you until you were 18 to tell you that you were living the wrong lifestyle or, or whatever BS they wanted to cram down your throat. That doesn't surprise me at all. When I was younger, there was a there was a dude in my congregation. I think I was probably 14 when he moved into our congregation. His mom was older and she had been in our congregation basically her whole life. And her son ended up leaving the area and moving to like San Francisco or something like that. And he decided to move back when I was like 13 or 14 years old or something like that. And he was very obviously gay. He lived as a gay guy for 20 years in San Francisco and spoke and acted like he was gay, like very flamboyant and things like that. And at the time what I was thinking in my head was, he's come back to Jehovah, I'm so happy for him, so glad. But this guy truly believes it in his heart and is, for no reason, suppressing a part of who he is. He's suppressing and hiding and hating a part of his core identity. It is so incredibly sad to see somebody get trapped in something like this and, and never be able to be themselves. Always hate who they are 
for no reason. This is completely unnecessary. And it, it it's just rooted in bigotry and hatred. Irrational bigotry and hatred. Now, I saw that guy after I got disfellowshipped not long ago. Like, I saw him in the store probably a couple of years ago. And he looked me in the eyes. And he looked away and kept walking. He... he is in full shun mode. Not only does he hate who he is inside, he hates who I am inside too. It's an extremely sad state of affairs. And I don't have much hope that he'll find his way out. But I'm glad that you found your way out and won't hate who you are or hate yourself for absolutely no reason. I I will be here supporting you and everybody like you and every other ex-Jehovah's Witness to the best of my ability until both feet are in the grave.